Someone told me recently that I'd photographed more world leaders than anyone in history. I don't know if that's true, but I'm very familiar with power and I'm fascinated by it. Nothing is like Putin, nothing. It's different. It's not trying too hard, it just is. And it has this quiet, calm chill that leaves you really humble. I got the call about four weeks before the shoot was to happen, and it was for Time magazine, and they were preparing Person of the Year. They flew me to Moscow. I wasn't sure when it's going to be, so I was put in this hotel and just told to wait. And it went on and on and on forever, and it got more and more painful. And then one day I got the call, tomorrow morning you'll be picked up by a black Kremlin BMW. We drove through the streets of Moscow, approaching this imposing building of the Kremlin. And then we went past the Kremlin into a dark, bleak, gothic forest. And I, I thought I was going to get whacked. I'm in the middle of nowhere. No one knows where I am. It felt like intimidation. Eventually, we arrived at probably the most imposing building I've ever seen in my life. And it's not that it was big, it was just mean. You're confronted by a one and a half or two story security wall on the outside that's covered in snipers. And I looked up and I see like all the snipers turned to me. It was like snow up to here. Uh, and I'm just in a suit. And uh, at gunpoint, out in the trunk of the car, I had to open all my equipment. And I remember this guy was using the, the barrel of his gun to point to every lens. And he said, open, open, open. And I mean, I didn't have a coat. I was shivering. My nose was dribbling. Uh, I, this is, I'm not James Bond, man. I'm not cool. And this was so intimidating. And then at gunpoint, I'm led into uh, the building. I was led into a small room and kept in this room for about seven, eight hours. And then suddenly uh, there's a knock at the door and they said, you can go into his office to set up. So I grabbed all my equipment and they said, you've got 15 minutes. And at one point in my mad scramble, I realized I needed power for my strobe light. I was watched by a gang of bodyguards and I saw one power socket, but there was already a plug in it. It was near his desk. So I went to pull that one out to put mine in. I remember them screaming, yet, yet. And then one of them pointed to the wire and he followed the wire, which went onto his desk into the back of a red phone in a glass case with a single button on it. So, I mean, that just added to the insanity of the whole situation. It felt like I'm going rogue in Putin's office. The swing doors open. Putin enters the room. He's flanked by, I think it was two translators who constantly whisper in his ear. He had a group of probably political advisors. And then he had a whole gang of tough guys, heavies. You know, it's kind of, they had shaved heads, one had a scar, it was that kind of thing. They all come up to me and I said, Mr. President, you know, I, I nervously said, you know, it's such an honor to be in Russia. And I have a question to ask you, if I may, that's got nothing to do with politics. So the translators whispered in his ear and uh, they all look, turn around and look at me and they say, what is the question? We have to be quick. So I said, well, I'm a massive Beatles fan, um, are you? So they translated the question and then he looked at the translators and his advisors and I guess in Russian, he just ordered them all out of the room immediately. It was very abrupt and it was almost as if, get out. So it was me, Putin and a gang of heavies. And uh, again, I didn't know what's about to happen now. You know, have I done something terrible? Should I not have been human? Should I not have been an ordinary citizen and just asked what the question that I w was quite interested in asking? Then he looks at me and in pretty much perfect English, he says, I love the Beatles. So I said, I didn't know you spoke English. 
and he kind of nods very quietly. He's not, he doesn't say a lot, you know, he's very quiet. Uh, but there's sort of uh, this crystally charisma in his eyes. And he says, what do you want? Let's do it. I remember as I'm focusing my camera, trying to stop my hand shaking, I ended up an inch and a half away from his nose. I could feel his breath on my hand as I focused the camera. Now, from that view, when I looked into his eyes, I just saw power. And it was cold. It was calm. It was power that I've never felt before. And to me, it felt like Russia first at all costs.